Not yet. Jason. You're live. <laughs> Greetings. I shall not be burned again. <laughs> Greetings. Jason has introduced Hello? us like five times already. It's been five yes. false starts. <laughs> and Just like it was back in track. track. Back when I was in track. <laughs> <laughs> False starts galore. Welcome to another issue or episode or whatever you want to call it of Cyberpunk Red. Uh, I'm Allison. My glasses aren't fucking over. I'm Jason. I'm playing Cavalry. Who's the 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 lawman and uh, Boy Scout? Uh, I'm Luke. I'm playing Zed. He's a mercenary. And I'm Scott, uh, sometimes called Fiberpunk. Uh, I'm going to be bullying these guys and once in a while telling them to roll dice. <laughs> uh, He's also the game god. <laughs> and, uh, Ms. Direction is uh, very generously uh, directing and producing behind the scenes tonight. So uh, thank you, Shane. Mm -hmm. And uh, we miss you playing tonight. <laughs> Shannon, I miss you every time I throw a brick. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a continuation of a game that we started uh, two weeks ago. No, three weeks ago now. <laughs> yeah. Because I screwed up our session. Our <laughs> Uh, schedule last week. Darn no, you job. didn't. Your job did. <laughs> well, well, that that's true. That's like that's like tripping <laughs> and falling on my face and blaming gravity. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> I'll have to try that next time. We a not exactly a pre-made adventure, but we are playing through a short story in the main book entitled Black Dog. Ooh. Because uh, I just have uh, not an ounce of originality anywhere in me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, where we left off, the group had just decided to take a job uh, delivering a mysterious crate to coordinates. It was radioactive. Ah, you remember that. <laughs> Yes. Uh, who wants to add anything else to the recap? I'm interested in what else you remember. Now we're going to New Mexico, specifically Alamogordo. And I'm rather in the hot zone. Yeah, I, I, I'm rather rather hyped about going to Alamogordo, so I can try digging up some uh, of the the, the fabled. E.T. Atari game cartridges. <laughs> Not because that's where uh, uh, where 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 the first nuclear uh, bomb test took place. No, it's the e it's the E.T. Uh, game cartridges that I'm after. Yes, and there was uh, something with a um, band, the lead guitarist, Johnny Silverhand. Yes. yes, I couldn't read my writing, so I could see Johnny something. So, <laughs> and Barbara Doll, we were Barbara, we were carrying this stuff around for Barbara Doll. So, yes. 
So yeah, we're we're, we're to go meet up at with a what was it, Joeds, uh, which is a nomad family in in New Mexico, and deliver this this large steel crate to them. Okay. Uh, that's correct. Um, they do have a convoy that is heading out from Night City to um, other locations in the south, which are farther south and farther, let's see, east of Night City. Uh, I think our correct. contact that we're supposed to meet up with is named Angel or Angel, depending on, or Angel, depending on whether or not they're Spanish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Spanish, Hispanic, and, or, or stripper, or. <laughs> <laughs> and your client is Samantha. A very, very shiny, chromy gal. <laughs> All right, and uh, this is a very appropriate uh, game for this particular week because uh, we are commemorating the memory of John Silverhand, who, in the lore, died on August 20th, 2023, during the raid on Arasaka Tower, which also blew up a good portion of Night City. <laughs> I remember that day like it was... Back of my oh wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, so there are a uh, uh the Reddit sub community. Oh no no the <laughs> community in the Cyberpunk Red sub Reddit uh, organized a lot of uh games uh to uh, coincide with this week as a special event and uh, this was a part of it uh we were doing this anyway we just it just happens to coincide and the name johnny silverhand comes up a lot in this story oh scott what you say is we knew what we were doing we just we we line this up to match up with his memory that's you just you you lie and you take the win okay <laughs> you, you, your 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 job knew that the, you'd have to skip a week so it it, it was all preemptive to to get us to this this I'm as my nose gets longer <laughs> so uh yes do we have any uh that covers the recap do we have any questions for you before the rubber hits the road no Okay. No, you're assuming I remember more, and you are assuming wrong. <laughs> like, it's in you can't even read your own notes. I read yeah. Johnny Simba. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just make sure I have plenty of the the the, the garbage coffee and uh, thermoses in the the passenger seat to be able to drink and keep myself awake while we're driving. <laughs> Just sit there. Can I drive? 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 You're driving the van, remember? What's the guy that's got oh, the radioactive cargo? Oh, that reminded me of that. You do have both vehicles with you, uh, oh, both cool. of which you lose, <laughs> <laughs> and one of which has uh, forged uh, documents that says that you're the owner. The other one you just <laughs> that zone and started driving it. <laughs> uh, uh, slight correction, your notes did lie to you. Your client is named Samantha, not Barbara Doll. Gotcha. Barbara Doll is... Yeah, Barbara Doll is the newscaster from... Uh, oh, the everybody is... That she talking. looked like. Yeah. Although Barbara Dahl was in Johnny Silverhand's band, Samurai. She was the keyboardist. Then Samurai uh, broke up. Uh, she murdered her husband. It was a whole to-do. 
sounds like another interesting backstory. So, all right. Uh, now, uh, who was it who went inside, and who was it who went, who stayed at the car? I stayed out of the car. I believe uh, Zed and um, um, Zara. Maybe. Uh, no, Jinx. So, yeah, Jinx. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was Jinx. I was trying to. Rem Sorry, Alice. I couldn't remember your character's name off the top of my head. It's wait. How Oof. could you? I remember my name, and that's why I didn't have to look at my notebook. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I went inside, <laughs> sure, and then we started rolling that out, because I, I, yeah, I checked to see if the thing was radioactive or not. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, you were specifically warned not to open it. Yes, that came up a few times. And it may or may not have the hand of Johnny Silverhand in it. <laughs> It's, it's really big, big enough, and we could... were just shoving it in the van, I think. So. Yep. Yep, you were wheeling it out to the van, and as you're wheeling it out to the van, um, you hear the roar of motorcycles approaching. You are currently in the bottom floor of a parking garage in the hot zone, which is the part of Night City that has not been cleaned up after the after the bomb blew up Arasaka Tower. I remember right, we and... all have, like, suits on. We have the little radiation bubble suits on, right? You bought some. If you've got them on, you've got them on. So, <laughs> I, so you look a little like beekeepers. <laughs> Great. I like this look. <laughs> but... <laughs> uh, but, yes, you came in... Uh, with a lot of precautions. Oh, uh, Zed. Yep. Okay. As a solo, uh, you've got a uh, some points and combat awareness, and you get to decide uh, how you want those allocated, and you can switch them around. Uh, you can do that. Uh, you can switch your points around as an action, but so that we know uh, where they are by default, uh, what are you doing with those? Do you have them uh, all in your perception? Ex if perception. 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 Or a bonus to your... Um, a bo or a bonus to your initiative... Or uh, soaking combat damage. Where do you like to keep those by default? Uh, perception. Perception. All right. And I believe that gives you. I gotta look that up. I think that that gives you four points to your perception. Oh. I'm really glad that you have perception, by the way, because I walk blindly into everything. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, you have enhanced situational awareness. Each point adds plus one to your perception checks made. Well, let's go ahead and do that right now. Uh, everybody make me a perception roll, please. That is going to be a 10-sider. Plus your perception skill, which I believe is an intelligence skill. And if you have... I rolled a 10! A Thank natural you. 10. Whoa. I rolled a 9 plus... Am I using the stat, the level, or total? Total. That's a 19. 19. 25. Ooh, excellent. Zed? Uh, 24. 24, okay. And you included your plus four. That, we that just... is correct. Okay. All right, yeah, those are all excellent rolls. So you guys see that 
uh, you not all, uh, you clock these guys before they even pop into view. You know that there are exactly uh, three motorcycles headed towards you. And they uh, even, ha you can even tell by uh, their distinctive sound which gang they are a part of. And that is the gang Iron Sights. This is a Japanese. This is a Japanese gang, and uh, they recently had a little bit of a gang war uh, against another gang called the Red Chrome Legion in town. And they get and uh, these guys used to be sponsored by one of the factions within Era, but when Arasaka pulled out, they kind of lost their sponsorship. And they are coming, and they are, they are coming in hot. Hey. All right, let me get out of here. Zed, were you expecting company other than us? <laughs> Wasn't made aware of. Samantha did not succeed in a perception check, so she doesn't know what you guys are talking about. But she is walking out out into the parking lot with you. Now well, let's get this thing loaded and let's. Get she's not all going with us, right? Here. She's staying where she is. Yeah, she hired you to deliver it for her. So she didn't specifically say, but yeah, it was implied that she's not leaving. I'm going to mention to her that someone's coming and she should probably get back in that little hidey hole. Very good. Okay, the end. I want to get paid, so she needs to be, like, with us. Um, you get are there columns? In... Are there columns in the underground there? There can be. Great. Yeah. I'm going to, like, uh... Columns? Like... Yeah, like, you know, because it's underground, right? So they would have the big, um, it's an underground parking lot, so they would have the big, um, cement, uh, columns, right? Uh, or whatever they call them. Uh, I'm going to wrap some duct tape between two of those <laughs> real fast. <laughs> okay. Uh, you guys have a free round of actions uh, before the trouble starts. Uh, that's what Jinx is doing. She's creating an obstacle course. <laughs> uh, Zach, what are you doing? Uh, I'm going to load in the, uh, the cargo in the back of the van, and then I'll get in the van and, hold, and aim my gun towards the commotion. Okay. Give me an athletics roll. That's going to be your uh, Tinsider, plus the athletic skill, plus your body. And we're going to say that the difficulty is going to be 13, because it is a heavy crate. And okay. the, and, uh, the uh, hover lift that it's floating on doesn't go quite up to the level of the van. <laughs> then add one point, because Samantha is going to help you with this. Uh, hey Jason, what is Calvary doing with his prep? I'm getting in the driver's seat and then uh, putting the uh, uh, raising the the grenade launcher and preparing it for essentially a uh, remote firing. <laughs> Remote firing? What do you mean by that? So I, I, I've got my steering wheel, and I've got like a little, 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 little trigger thing on the steering wheel that I can press that'll fire off around. Oh, okay. Did you say uh, athletics and body? Uh, yeah, athletics is a body skill. Okay. Isn't it? Uh, no, no, it's a dexterity. I'm, I'm sorry, athletics is a dexterity skill. So I'll give you your choice. 
Either Dex or body. Either one. <laughs> I'll do Dex. Okay. Um, so I rolled a four on the dice, but my base is 14, so it's 18. All right. Yeah, uh, Zed, uh, Samantha tries to help, and Zed kind of just muscles, him, muscles his way in, and <laughs> thud. Gets a big job done in a single move. Lifts with his legs and everything. <laughs> Okay, and then Samantha uh, turns around and, uh, as requested, uh, heads back to her front door. At that point, uh, the motorcycles pop into view, and they are rushing forward in an attack pattern. Everybody roll me initiative. This is a 10-sider plus your reflex stat. Eleven. Okay. You uh, have to beat a nine to beat these guys. Fifteen. Okay, two successes. Mm. What I'll did Zed? Ten success and reflex. Uh, it's eight. So it's an eighteen. Ooh. You guys are very, very quick on the draw. And, uh, so that means that everybody gets, in addition to the action that you just took to prep, uh, for this attack, you also all get to go first. So, and I don't care which order you do it in. I was going to say, I don't... <laughs> I was going to let someone else go first. I didn't know if the duct tape uh, would at least, you know, <laughs> whack one of the well, guys Well, they wouldn't have their... gotten to it yet, probably. Yeah, they haven't quite reached that yet. So I'm going to target the middle. Hold that idea. Um, yeah, uh, we'll say that the uh, duct tape is a held action, waiting for them to appear. So, yeah, uh, they will react to that, after all. And did you guys... Depending on how they do that, you guys are going to be able to make better tactical decisions. So I'm going to uh, make some rolls in order to see how well these guys maneuver. They were not expecting uh, to be clotheslined by duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> so eight... Oh... Well, the first guy evades quite well. Second guy evades. Uh, third guy does not. So, uh, what happens is, as these three motorcycles come in, uh, two of them wave off to the side. So, they, <laughs> uh, they can still make ranged attacks if they want to, but uh, they're not going to be able to run you down. The third one... Uh, uh, tries to uh, spin out Limbo? and dip underneath the clothesline, but he just ends up but he just ends up uh, on his side, scraping across the concrete. <laughs> so is it just our two vehicles then? Uh, yes. All, All right, of I'm gonna... Cars down here got looted years ago. And he's All going right. to... I'm... I'm going to gun it straight at the one who fell and hope to split between uh, split uh, the, the, the other two that uh, evaded and hopefully run over the, the, the one that um, uh, didn't. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he took five pieces of road pizza already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Disconnected again. Oh. I'm seeing a Twitch ad. 
It's my own fault for not Take subscribing. number 42. Go yeah. ahead. <laughs> Check. Okay. Dodging a ramming vehicle. He's not going to be able to dodge because he's kind of pinned underneath his own motorcycle. Uh, both your vehicle and the pedestrian piece of cover or other vehicle take 6d6 damage. I will uh, allow you to avoid that 6d6 damage with a good piloting roll, though. Uh. So you're going to uh, roll your tensider plus drive land vehicle, I think is the name of the skill. Yes. And uh, your DV is going to be a 15. Let's see, where is my drive land vehicle? I know it's around here somewhere. Now, question. Uh, the other two that are still coming around, uh, would we consider this an ambush? Like, are we ambushing them now? There it is. You guys got your perception rolls uh, high enough that ye Yeah. Yeah, I'll let yeah, you so go. Yeah, so we have advantage? Um... Nine. I'm I'm in the back of the van. <laughs> um, I'm going to pull my pistol out, the heavy pistol I have, and I'm going to try and aim for one of the other bikes that are coming around, like the driver or okay. rider. All right, left or right? Uh, say left. Okay. Uh, Jason, you got that roll ready? Yep, I rolled a 15. Fifteen. That is uh, not adequate. Uh, are you going to spend a luck um, because I because I set the DV at fifteen and you have to? Beat yes. It. So yes, I will be using a luck point. Okay, using one luck point to go up to sixteen. Uh, that is successful. Uh, so you're not going to take any damage. He's going to take sixty-six. So six six siders, please. A crunch. <laughs> Twenty-three points of damage. Uh, since he was already a little bit hurt, and because his armor's not great, that is a killing blow. <laughs> <laughs> then I will give you the option of whether uh, he's uh, uh, flat on the ground, uh, behind your limo as it's as it gains speed. Or if you're just uh, dragging him. Then so he here, here, since I deftly swerved wow. to miss the actual oh, motorcycle. <laughs> really? <laughs> deftly swerved? Yes! It was a successful uh, roll. With luck. <laughs> His head was sticking far enough away from the motorcycle, so as I drove over, it went shink, shink, right over his head. So you, you see his body just kind of spasming under the, the motorcycle while his head is now road pizza. Thank you. That description, Jason, that'll live in my head for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Oh, does they have that attack mail ready? Uh, yes. Yeah, all right. What's your roll? What's your roll? Uh, do I need a roll to hit? Yes, please. Uh, is that not D10? Yep. Yeah, that's a D10. And you're going to add your handgun skill, which is a reflex skill. Uh, eleven. Eleven. Um. Did you roll really low? Eight, one, two, three. Yeah, I rolled a free. Okay. Oh, uh, what's your reflex? Uh, my reflex is eight. Eight. Okay. Do you have any stats in your handgun? Uh, no. No levels in my handguns. 
Okay. Oh, that's, yeah. That would explain it. Handgun's the, not the weapon that you nor that your character normally uses. Okay. That's correct. Yeah. So yeah, um, you needed a thirteen, I'm afraid. So Can that use... shot is a bit wide. Uh, which handgun are you using? Uh, the very heavy pistol. Very heavy pistol. Yeah, that's only a rate of fire one. So that sounds yep. like a miss to me. Okay. All right. Hey, Allison, uh, what is Jinx doing? Shotgun. Okay. Uh, roll that. You're using your shoulder arms skill. Okay. And because you guys are setting this up, um, I'll give you the most advantageous uh, range. So your DV is going to be a 13. Okay. Shoulder. I can... Uh, shoulder arms. Okay, found it. <laughs> okay, I'm rolling 10. Better, right? Yes. Okay. 10 and adding your total after shoulder arms. Four. Seventeen. That is a hit. And you can right. roll your damage. Damage says five D six. Okay. Five of your six siders added together. Great. I gotta roll a couple times because I just have two out right now. So give me a sec. Take your time. So we got And let us know if you get box cards, which are two sixes, two or more sixes. I rolled three sixes, um, and then a five and a two. So 25. Okay. Plus potential critical damage. Yeah, uh, five points for critical damage. So that's 27 uh, before armor reduction. And you get to roll on the critical injury table. So roll me another 2d6 for the critical injury, please. Four. Four. Collapsed lung. So you shot this guy... Through the lung, he has minus two to move, down to a minimum of one, and base death saving penalty is increased by one. I'm going to go ahead and make that roll now. Uh, he's at zero hit points. Uh, he's, he crashes. But... Uh, he is still breathing through his one good lung. <laughs> Out of the... Okay, now it's their turn. The one survivor... <laughs> uh, cannot get into melee range with you. But he can fire his crossbow. Who is not in a vehicle currently? Um, I think I was on this, I don't remember if I've, I had done the duct tape and I was going towards a vehicle, but I don't remember if I was in it. I was um, going towards the driver's seat, but I wouldn't have been shooting. I would probably be outside the vehicle. <laughs> well, you've got enough movement. If you want to be, uh, say that you move back into the vehicle, that's fine. Yeah, because I was going to get in the driver's seat and okay. the van and start moving. All right. Yeah, and hopefully the back doors are closed. I didn't know. I didn't, and like, <laughs> Zed was taking care of the doors. But... They're not closed. <laughs> They're not closed. <laughs> no. But Zed... That's close farm from... I, I think I heard you say... I, Luke, I think I heard you say that Zan was at the van. So I'm taking that he's inside the van. Yes, yes. I'm in the back just, like, shooting out of the back. Okay, this guy is going... Uh, to fuck. Uh, he is driving by wire. He's got a uh wire that's connected uh to his head, 
and two of the motorcycle. So he's got two free hands, and he is going to shoot a crossbow, Zara style, at the windshield of the van. Good thing it's got a metal plate on the on the front and no windows. Eighteen. That is ac that is accurate. So the van itself is going to take four D six damage. Correct. You are within cover. And his damage roll was miserable. Five <laughs> points of damage. So uh yeah, it's as Allison is sitting in the dri in the driver's seat, what happens is that a crossbow bolt uh, punches uh, through uh, the uh, opaque metal windshield and just lodges there. About uh, six <laughs> in the face. Oh, good. And the good. <laughs> okay. And just slam on the brakes. Yeah, I don't have to start driving. <laughs> So both vehicles are now moving. Um, they blow uh, through the duct tape barrier, <laughs> which, wasn't, <laughs> which wasn't actually as dangerous as it looked. And you are on the ramp heading out into the street now. But this motorcycle s turns, and it is still pursuing you. And the guy on the motorcycle with the crossbow is, yeah, it's handy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But he doesn't look Japanese at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, top of the initiative. Uh, what are you guys doing? This is now a this is now a chase scene, a running battle. Well, I think Zed had the the best initiative, and since he's in the back of the the van at the in second vehicle, I mean, wouldn't Makes he sense. have a clear shot at the at the 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 motorcycle? Yes. Uh, Luke, would you like Zed to redeem himself? <laughs> He's switching. How are we do, how are we looking at switching weapons? Is that a bonus action? Uh, yeah. If yeah, you can just uh drop a weapon to your side and grab another weapon is a free action. Okay, I'm going to switch to my assault rifle. Okay, very good. Uh, Allison, uh, since you're driving, I will let you specify what the range is between you and this uh, motorcycle that is pursuing you. Oh, um, I think that the back of the van is a little way down. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to guess if the suspension isn't great. I have this image of like the front of the van being up a little bit and the back kind of being down a little bit. So we're probably not able to get quite the speed that, uh, like, you know, Jason is. And I'm oh. yelling at Jason to slow down. <laughs> and he, of course, can't hear because he's in the vehicle, he's in the limo. <laughs> Uh, so okay. the the um, I'm gonna say it's it's closer than I would like it to be. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm also yelling yard. to close the door. Close the door. Close the door. <laughs> twenty yards, fifteen yards, thirteen yards. Or you Let's go lucky thirteen. Okay, thirteen yards. That means that uh, Zed only has to roll a 15. Uh, your DV is 15, so you only have to roll a 16 or higher. Can I use uh, auto fire? Yes, you absolutely may use auto fire, which okay. has a different DV at uh, 13. So you have to roll a 21 or higher. No, 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 a 17 or higher. Auto rifles, okay. I see. 17 or higher. They changed the chart with... Uh, or auto fire uh, when they release the Arita. Okay. So make All a right, roll. So I rolled a five and my base is 14. 19. So 17. 17. Okay. 
All right, auto fire. If you hit, roll 2d6 for damage and multiply it by the amount you beat the DV or hit. Okay, so you beat the DV. You got a 19. I said you needed a 16. You beat it by three points. So you're going to roll 2d6 and add three points to that, first of all. Yep. So roll, roll me 2d6, please. Yep, so I got a five and a four. Okay, that's nine plus three. And then uh, your multiplier for an, a shot, for an assault rifle is four. So 14, 28 points of damage. Yep. All right. I know I didn't explain that clearly, but... <laughs> uh, but uh, if my arithmetic is correct, uh, it, it, that is more than adequate to uh, wipe this guy off the road. Describe your kill for us. All right, so as I'm auto-firing, I get him in the head, and he swerves off and s crashes into the side of the wall. <laughs> Outstanding. Assuming the front of the motorcycle is smashed, and it's just the last part, and the wheel just keeps spinning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he collided with a brick wall that had some iron sights uh, tagging spray-painted on it. <laughs> And the back, the back wheel is or is still revving. <laughs> and that ends the that ends the entire combat scene. As you are rushed, as you are driving very quickly out of the hot zone, and towards the outskirts of Night City. You were given coordinates uh, just on the south side of town, in uh, what used to be a train yard. Uh, there is a uh, there is a camp uh, where the nomads of the Jodes clan meet. So as you're pulling in, you're seeing these uh, nomad vehicles that are all dust covered. They are uh, uh, most of them have uh, some sort of combat plow on the front of them. They've got uh, weapons hanging off the sides. There's a there's an armored school bus over there. There's an armored dump truck over there. I think that these guys might have uh, grown up watching a little too much uh, Mad Max movies. What's wrong with that? <laughs> and it is a guarded entrance, but uh, the guard uh, sees you coming and just waves you in, like you're expected. Gotcha. I'm assuming as I'm going in, when I go over the um, little bump to get into the garden area, the back of the van just scrapes. <laughs> Sparks. <laughs> oh no. And as you come, to, as you come, as you drive in, uh, you see Trey Santiago waving at you like this. Hey, over oh, there. And he's got That's his unexpected. Head, uh, bobbing, oh, bobbing and flying behind his shoulder. So he is very easy to pick out in the crowd. Hey, Trey. Oh, Intern's oh. not with you, is he? No, no, and um, I don't remember there being a crossbow bolt in uh, your van the last time I saw it, which was no. Just that's a that 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 that's a new head uh, uh, hood decoration. Uh, not quite on the hood though. It, it oh. keeps the driver awake and from slamming on the brakes though, because obviously if they slam on the brakes, <laughs> right into the arrow. As he's doing this, I am sawing at the inside of it. <laughs> Using a metal saw trying to get rid of the, the bolt on the inside.
Yeah, as a tech, you have the option of performing what is called a jury rig. It only takes one action uh, to uh, repair a machine, but the repair only lasts for one hour. <laughs> Otherwise, to properly patch it up, you're going to have to take your time. Um, are you going to are you going to bring the van with you, um, or are you going to offload this crate onto one of the Nomad vehicles? It's probably going to do better point? in one of the Nomad vehicles, honestly. <laughs> the van's not really meant for carrying things in the desert. Um, at all. Not to mention we don't have forged documents for it. Is there anyone there ready to like bargain for a vehicle? Like, we buy? Yeah, there, there are dozens of nomads all around. Um, uh, just uh, they're loading vehicles. They're fueling up their vehicles. Uh, Trace says, uh, "Hey, uh, you better top off your chew too in in your tank before you leave. Uh, just help yourself. The line for the pump is right over there." I'll go drive the limo over, and I'm sitting here like, oh, this, uh, I've missed this. This is, it's been a while since I've been in the, in this type of. Yes. Uh, this doesn't come up often, but uh, viewers, uh, Calvary was raised in a nomad family. Uh, the only player character here currently who was. Uh, Zara also was, but uh, she's uh, uh, she's been uh, in the back of of the limo, uh, sleep uh, sleeping through the entire fight. <laughs> she's she's sleeping off her uh, smash hangover. Again? And Trace says, wow, you guys made it uh, uh, just in time. Uh, caravan is about to leave uh, for Vegas uh, any minute now. So uh, you're welcome to join up. You're welcome to join up with them. I take it that you did get, uh, take it that you did get the package. Package. One of the tires in the van blows at this point in time. <laughs> <laughs> the back of it just starts sinking. Yeah, uh, it, 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 it's, it's back there. Uh, this isn't the type of package that has air holes in it, is it? Because we'd have to tell the... No. We'd have to tell the caravan master about that. All right. Um, no, but um, it does make a lot of chirping when you put the, the rad meter up against it. And Trey says, <laughs> don't joke about that. Uh, not joking. He turns his camera drone off, and he puts it away, and he says, um... Uh, Calvary? Um... Uh, please... Please tell me that I. Uh, uh, please tell me that I did not hear what I just thought I heard. Well, the when you put the red meter up, it goes click 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 real 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 strong. I said. Why do you think we're wearing these stupid suits? Oh, you're still wearing the suits? Oh yeah. He said. Says, oh, oh, she is. I'm not. <laughs> They're not. I am. I'm not. Like, of course, it's radiation. I'm not an idiot. I'm going to wear a suit. I thought that you had a terrible uh, fashion and wardrobe skill. Me? Oh my goodness. He said, "All right. Um. Uh, uh, get your whole team here. Gather around. I need to explain something." Oh. Uh, Calvary, Zara, I, 
take it that you guys have been uh, out of the nomad life for a while now? Yeah, just a little bit. A Okay. few years, like All right. Well, six, this, seven. uh, this is going to be a reminder, and uh, the rest of you are maybe hearing this for the first time. Uh, nomads are kind of superstitious, and uh, some believe that carrying certain cargo like slaves is bad luck. Uh, other nations are uh, just fine with that. Um, some nations won't let you carry uh, street drugs. Others are just fine with that. The one thing in which all seven nomad nations agree is the legend of the broken wheel. And Great, he... and you just and the tire just blew on that. <laughs> he draws the sand a circle with some lines in it uh, that looks like a radiation symbol. And he says, this is a broken wagon wheel. Uh, all nomad children are taught this uh, before they are taught nursery rhymes. When the pioneers uh, set off and uh, blaze the Oregon Trail across uh, the continental United States, uh, the worst calamity that could happen to them that would leave them stranded and starving was a broken wagon wheel. It became a universal symbol of doom, and it was a symbol that was picked up and carried on by the nomads. If you carry anything with this symbol on it, you doom not only yourselves, but you doom everyone in your nomad caravan and all of their children for generations going forward. This is taboo. You absolutely do not kill, you do not carry a broken wagon wheel or anything that has this symbol that has this symbol on it nomads Pretty don't good thing it doesn't have the it doesn't have the symbol on it but the geiger counter did tick off it wasn't wasn't trace the one who told us about this hooked us up with this who told us about this getting this Picking this up from what's her face, Samantha. Yeah, I did. I didn't know that you were that you were going to oh, carry. Oh, Mr. 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 Information Guy didn't bother to figure that out or check or anything like that, and just. Okay, I'm going to speak with the caravan master, and I'm probably going to and. I'm going to uh, smooth things over and see what I can do. <laughs> but uh, after I tell him what you're carrying, uh, you're not going to be welcome in this caravan. I'm just letting you know that flat out. Then that's one of the reasons why I also let you know, so that way I'm going to work this into the backstory here, uh, <laughs> because... of the 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 taboo so if we need to either sally forth in front of the of of the caravan or uh tag behind the caravan okay. as to not be part of the actual caravan we will do so Look, I did set this up for you, so huh? I'll take poorly, the poorly, very poorly, very, very poorly. Jinx, <laughs> you're not helping matters here. Trace walks. I know you didn't grow up in the nomad sex uh, part of life, but just, just, just let Trey handle this. Oh. Does anyone go with? I will go with. Okay. Um, I'm going to not go with them because I'm mad. <laughs> and <they're> probably... <laughs> um, okay. I'm probably... Gonna... I'll go with them too. I'm just being observant. All right. I'm going to go off um, camera for just a second while you guys are doing that negotiation okay. stuff. All right. Okay. Jinx is off uh, putting fuel in the tank. 
Yes. Got it. All right. Trace uh, walks over to this um, older-looking nomad and um, uh, says, uh, "Hey, uh, you're the master. He, you're the master here, right? Um, look, uh, something unexpected happened, and I take full responsibility for it." And uh, goes on to explain the situation there. And so, uh, what do what do Zed and Calvary uh, have to add? Are you say, are you speaking up, saying anything? I will, I'm just gonna look around. I'm uh, I'm going to kind of do the same thing that I said to Trace. Like, I wanted to. I I grew up a nomad. I know the taboo. That's why I wanted it to be forthcoming. We are more than happy to go ahead of the caravan or lag behind. That way we are not part of the caravan proper. Um, we understand, too, that you may not come to come to any aid if, if needed or stop if we were running uh, ahead of the caravan, uh, if we run into trouble. Um, but obviously wanted wanted you to be aware of the situation. Okay. I'd like you to give me a die roll. You're going to roll your conversation skill. See how... Can I... That would be social. Can I roll a perception to see how many people are in this caravan? Yeah. Absolutely. I rolled an 11. Okay. Uh, first, uh, Luke, exception, you count, uh, five vehicles, uh, plus whatever vehicle that you're leaving, leaving, and they're fairly large vehicles, uh, so, uh, they're, good, like, a couple of dozen, uh, nomads here. Uh, none of them children, but, uh, a lot of them look like non-combatants. And I posted in the Cyberpunk channel on Discord a picture of your, uh, Caravan master. Her name is Boonville. All right. Hmm. A eleven was uh, only a, a middling roll. So, um, uh, Calvary was uh, supportive in spirit, but not all, but not overly persuasive, or not persuasive enough for this. And Boonville tells him. Look, you're not riding with us. You're welcome to uh, patch up your vehicles here. You're welcome to uh, help yourself to our fuel, uh, to top off your ammo. But then you're leaving alone. Uh, your vehicle uh, has enough, definitely has, has enough fuel to get you where you're going, maybe get you back. Because Chew 2 burns slowly. Very efficient. And, Understood. Um, and then she turns to Trace and says, Young Santiago, uh, your family is basically royalty around here. That's why I'm not shooting you before kicking you out. Uh, uh, you should not have allowed this to happen, and I think you know, and I think you know it. Do not mention to anyone else here what you brought into my camp. All right, you've got twenty minutes to get out, and this caravan leaves in twenty-one. Don't be blocking the gate for my wheels. And she storms off. With that perception check, did I see any, like, random vehicles just being left alone, not being used? Like, say, bikes. Yes. Uh, yes, you do. Because the uh, Nomad roll ability is um, a motor pool 
that uh, they that a nomad character can borrow from. So yeah, the nomads they maintain a fleet of land vehicles and bikes and some clans uh, also water vehicles. So yeah, there are a few bikes around. Before she um, barges off, can I ask if I can use a bike? She says, hell no. <laughs> Damn it. You can try to steal it <laughs> if, which, if you think you can get away with it. But that's specifically a nomad ability, to borrow a vehicle. <laughs> you can try to buy one off of them, but I'll tell you right now, you can't afford it. <laughs> I thought that these guys had loads and loads of money. <laughs> How do you think they made their money? <laughs> Oh, I guess we've got fifteen minutes to to change the 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 uh, attire on the van. <laughs> yes. Even though the timing doesn't uh, bear out, I will. Even though the timing doesn't really fit, I will allow Jinx to uh, make a repair roll in order to repair those lost hit points on the van. If you want okay. to do that now. That would probably be good. <laughs> um, that's a 10? Ten, ten, roll 10 die side? Yes, you're going to roll a 10 cider. Mm -hmm. And you're going to add... Ah, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, you have four points in your tech ability, right? Six. Okay, six points in your tech stat. This is probably what you need to do. Okay, add those six points, please. Okay. I rolled poorly. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't a one, was it? That was a two. <laughs> Almost as bad, but... Yeah. Uh, so that's like an eight. Okay, and how many points do you have in field expertise? Well, which one is that? Okay, that is under your roll ability. M maker? Uh, you've got, uh, and, yes. You've got some points in upgrade, some in fabrication, and some in field expertise. First aid, uh, no. Land vehicle tech? Uh, no, no, that's a skill. Okay. But, uh, sorry, I'm trying. I'm very good at reading these sheets. Like, if you want <laughs> expert level reading these sheets, uh, just... Well, I just pulled up the character sheet before we started, <laughs> part of my prep. Um, okay, just add two... Just add two points. I know it's gonna... You've got at least two points in field expertise. Okay, so... And just... Yeah. Okay. I was looking for field uh, expertise on here. I just don't. I see skill, name, okay. type. The van is. Well, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be a skill. It'd be like, uh, like when you're looking at mine. I've got my uh, handle or my name, my role, and then my role ability with backup, uh, mm -hmm. which is what you're. Yeah, uh, I think that I might have put hers on the second page because oh. it's a little more wordy. So I couldn't. Fit oh, in that field page. expertise uh, is four because it's on the second page. All right. All right. So that brings it up to a twelve. Um, uh, the van is fully repaired. You, uh, okay. you replaced all of its lost hit points. Cool. So, uh, you guys are not going to, uh, uh, ride with this caravan after all. What is your new plan? Well, we've got the the coordinates that we need to get to, right? Yes. You've got the coordinates. You know that there are roads that go that way. <laughs> so, go GPS? <laughs> I was going to say, I can do you one better. I got an agent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, my agent's smarter than me. It probably won't. <laughs> Uh, 
Let's see, uh, I mean, we don't really, uh, look. We probably, uh, yeah. need to get going. Good flares, tech bag. We have Bill, water. You're in with these guys, right? <laughs> Maybe you can borrow a map. Oh, I was gonna say, would would our agents be able to to kind of give us a, a yes? They map? absolutely can do that. But after you leave Night City and get away from their those com towers, um, oh, that's right. Uh, there is no longer uh, coast to coast data data coverage. You are okay. going to become uh, fancy alarm clocks. Can we still see images on them? Like if you take yes. pictures? All right, so pull up a map and start taking screenshots of the map. Okay. Um, yeah, you find uh, uh, some very helpful nomads uh, who are willing to show you. And uh, the person who hands you the map is a familiar face. It is the machine. <laughs> it is the girl who quit the maelstrom. She says, Oh, Jim, it, it's you. I'm like, buddy! <laughs> You're looking I alive. You. <laughs> I appreciate you lying to me. So, it looks like I'm a nomad now. Are you joining up? No, but, I mean, unless you want us to join your group, or you could give us a map of this. Like, you could give us a map of where we need to go, or we could join your group and I could just hang around you, like, all day, all the time, all the time. All right, she hands you a map and she says, you can keep it. <laughs> Okay, you sure? I just Yeah. <laughs> uh driving from Morrow Bay to Alamogordo, I just looked it up on Google Maps. Because it's been a long time since I did this, is going to be a fifteen hour and thirty seven minute trip. So a little under sixteen hours. And oh that's interesting. There are off uh, uh, four car wrecks along the way. <laughs> <There are. laughs> Nothing like having real-time information. <laughs> Get to drive on Route 66 at all? Hmm. Nope. Oh! Uh, but if you want to take uh, the uh, less traveled roads to avoid uh, more eyes, you absolutely could go that way. How long is that way? Uh, longer. <laughs> 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 we'll say that that adds, let me, uh, one extra hour. <laughs> okay. I think it's worth it. Okay. Uh, do I have any gas um, containers in the van? Can take extra gas with? Not yet, but the nomads have some. Great. They'll I'm give gonna, them to you. Because take most some of, of these no yet they're pissed off at you. <laughs> I'm uh, getting gas in those really quickly before we like run out the welcome uh, <laughs> and hauling. All right, machine says uh. Why aren't you just, um, hey, why aren't you, why don't you just ride with the caravan? Uh, leave that junky van behind. This Wish machine we could, talking but... or someone else? <laughs> That's the machine talking. Um, machine, do you want us to stay with you? Want me to stay with you? Want me to ride with you? Well, I was just being hospitable, but sure. 
<laughs> You'd be fun. And I think that you can hold your bladder. What? What do you mean, hold my bladder? <laughs> you guys stop, right? She she means no pit stops. What? No. No. Uh, the new lifestyle is that you stop to camp. No, no. Pit no. stops. No, you need pit stops. I don't do no pit stops. Who doesn't do no pit stops? What does your van smell like? <laughs> Why do you think most of them are open air? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, we're not going with the can. I bit stops are necessary. Necessary. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one of the main reasons why we're we're not going with the caravan. This is pampered lifestyle. Your pit stop is not a pampered lifestyle. That is a basic. Basic human need, okay? That sounds dangerous. There are bandits out in the south. We know. We know. Do you have enough guns with you? I'm currently scrambling around looking for adult diapers, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> if you spend a luck point, you can find a whole crate full of adult diapers. Great. I'm spending a luck point because uh, nah. <laughs> okay, we can add that to the group inventory. <laughs> <laughs> Depends. <laughs> From I'm, yours. I'm not wearing diapers. <laughs> uh, don't you just be gross on your own? <laughs> well, I'm used to it. I say, well, why do you think most nomads wear kilts? Uh, I'm grossed out, and I'm I'm loading up the van with extra water because they have water there, right? Yes. Extra gas. Good, that is a good suggestion. They do have yep. filtered water. At and the I get some at the water and probably some rations as well. Yeah. Uh, the rations aren't going to be uh, as good. It's mostly bags of kibble. We have to hey. climb. After That's what end. I grew grew up on, so. <laughs> I've had wuss. <laughs> nothing but okay. kibble. Nothing but kibble. Why did I agree on to go on this stupid thing? This is hell. Oh, this I is getting back to nature. This is the n next best thing to heaven. Right? I'm flipping you off as I'm walking towards the van. <laughs> <laughs> This reminds me of... We'll, we'll, we'll turn her into a true nomad. <laughs> oh, you <Maybe>. won't! <laughs> and so, the Edge Runners drive out of the setting sun, uh, just as they wear out their welcome. And uh, it is a brilliant setting sun, because in the time of the red, all of the sunsets are brilliant red, and they last a couple of hours. <laughs> Because the atmosphere is that messed up. There's uh, still particulates from the last war up there. Are we driving towards the sun? You are driving away from the sun. You are driving east. Oh, good. Good. Night City is on the Californian coast. And uh, Luke might be at a geological disadvantage here. <laughs> 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 Uh, when we talk about these North American landmarks, it's all Greek to him, I realize. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, have you ever seen a spaghetti western? Uh, yeah. You're driving into territory that looks like that. Okay. Um, as you drive out of uh, uh, Night City, uh, you are going to realize uh, just how uh, wrecked um, the landscape is. Because uh, as you drive out of night, night City and after the sun sets, you are driving into pitch darkness. There are no street lights. There are no towns that have electricity. 
and there are uh, very few to no airplanes flying overhead. Uh, what you've got is you've got the moon, the stars, if it's not going to be a cloudy night, and you have uh, your headlights. Beyond that, the night is as black as a coal mine as you drive past one ghost town after another. Well, and... Very desolate you know, wastelands. Give, and, give, I was going to say, you might need to give us a little bit of more of an well, um, education on nomads, but I would assume that they're... They probably don't drive or travel with headlights on to begin with in order to stay as inconspicuous as possible. You kind of need them in that landscape. Um, sorry, no, I, I was going off of, like, I live out, my, when I grew up in the middle of nowhere, and if you don't have headlights, you can't see anything to drive. You, like, have to have headlights. I suggest that we dim them when we go into town. Okay. Uh, typically, Use that duct tape and make little slit uh, cover off, but no, uh, nothing but the little slits. Exactly. <laughs> typically, nomad clans do travel in these heavily armed caravans, so nobody messes with them. <laughs> That's okay. That would make sense. Yeah. All right. So you've got uh, at least a. You got a 16 to 18 hour trip ahead of you. How are you going to pass the time? And you are taking both vehicles, right? Can I clean my weapons? Yes. That sounds like a good use of your time. I'm blasting some Johnny Silver handed just to stay awake. <laughs> I'm blasting EDM, and I also have a disco ball in the van, which no one can see, like, because there's no windows. So it's, like, full disco tech. We gotta let every band camp along the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you drive through the night. And, uh, With past, no pit stops. Yeah, past the uh, ruins of Los Angeles. Well, L.A. isn't uh, completely uninhabited, but it is um, uh, due to uh, rising sea levels and um, and a uh, significant earthquake. It is a shadow of its former self. Drive past Anaheim. And then you switch over to the less frequented roads, so you can avoid attention. On your way to Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, around the time that you, hit, that you reach the border between the independent nation of South California and the independent nation of Arizona, you, um, even though uh, you're traveling on the uh, less frequented road, it, you do uh, spot in your rearview mirrors uh, somebody coming up behind you as dawn breaks uh, in front of you and the eastern sky turns red. Oh, cavalry, you have telescopic eyes, correct? I do. Cavalry? I do. Oh, did I drop out? I thought No. You... No? Okay. No. All right, mine no, is the, 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 the only uh, um, thing that I had is the uh, the the I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> okay. So you've got the, some side... The little uh, patch that I can put uh, hide stuff in. Oh, okay, okay. The subdermal pocket, that's what it is. 
Okay. Then how about everybody make a perception roll again? And Zed gets to add his uh, four-point bonus to perception. I got a 17 with that full point. Ooh, excellent. 13. Okay, 13. 16. 16. Okay, yeah, there is a another biker gang coming up behind you. But this biker gang is uh where um is flying flags on the backs of their bikes. And a Zed specifically is able to pick out that this is a type of biker gang that you don't normally see out here. This is a bo Bososuku. Oh, boy. I butchered that pronunciation. I'm sorry. Bososoku. This is a Japanese biker gang. Like, not posers, but guys actually from Japan. And they are and they are gaining gaining on you. Some actually flew in a biker gang from Japan to pursue you guys. I'm gonna make my way towards the front of the van and give uh, Jinx a tap on the shoulder. Okay. To basically warn her. I'm gonna jump and hit the disco ball. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. Uh, as they draw closer, you're able to see that uh, they have very good bikes, and these, uh, not necessarily armored, but these guys are very heavily armed. They have machine guns. They have rocket launchers. Ooh. We need to make a detour. We need to get out of here. We need to lose them. Right. Your agents have our... do have... You can communicate with each other, by the way. Your agents are capable of doing that. You can like use them like... Talkie. Yeah. Hmm. You might need to talk to Calvary. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I just, uh, I, I go ahead and beep him or whatever and go, yeah, wake up. I am awake. Why do you think I'm still driving? I don't know. You got some kind of auto drive thing on that stupid. Uh, we're being chased and it's not good. Yeah, I saw them. Um, I hand the I hand the agent over to Zed and say, "You talk to him. I can't. It's like talking." <laughs> uh, Calvary, you you know this area at all? Uh, no, I've been more up yeah. north, further north than I have been down in this area. We need to find a way to lose trail of these guys. I've seen they got rocket launchers. Oh, okay. We need um, rocket launchers. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are you suggesting? Maybe we can uh, find some abandoned car park or something along the way that we can navigate into. So if we need a battle, <sighs> we can set the fences. I don't think we're going to be able to find that out in this uh, desolate, uh, godforsaken uh, land. Um, if you spend a luck point, you can. I will spend one. All right. As he says that, <laughs> there's nothing out here is completely desolate. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never find anything. <laughs> 
You find an old abandoned uh rest highway rest stop that's coming Perfect. up on the side of the road. So we can uh, set up the fences there if we need to. And I relay the information back to the other two. All right. Did you happen to see how many bikers were on our tail? I believe there was two, maybe three. Six. The six. Okay, the six. <laughs> <laughs> Even I didn't more. Really hear that information that nobody asked until now. But okay, there are six. Okay. Wouldn't get even more if Zara was awake. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Uh, the van definitely has no chance of outrunning these guys. So I... pulling over and uh, <laughs> fortifying yourself is not a half bad idea. So you pull into the rest stop. I thought that I had a rest stop map. But uh, it looks like I don't have such a thing handy. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, you pull into a rest. Uh, you pull into a rest stop. Um, it's a uh, brick building, fairly large. Uh, it uh, has a men's room and a women's room, and a uh, and a central section between the two. Uh, with um, vending machines that got emptied out years ago. Uh, do I need to roll a perception to see if we can hide the van? You're... The only I place you see that you can hide the van is behind, is directly behind the brick building. Yeah, that's what there. I plan to do. Okay. It's nuclear, so I don't want it to be you know, shot of <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not that it's nuclear, it's just radioactive. Yeah, radioactive. <laughs> okay. Oh. Uh, you pull a well, where are you parking the parking the limo? I'm going to park the limo on the uh, the far side, uh, farthest away, but on the uh, side, so that way I can potentially lob grenades. Okay. From the rocket, from the grenade launcher, over. Okay, you got to pull over now, uh, Allison. So I would like grenade. you. Sorry, I was going to say he has a grenade launcher. Does he? Do you also have that? motorized shotgun thing from the basement of the vampire yeah, thing? Yeah, uh, we weren't able to get it mounted, though. Okay. I couldn't remember. So. Good point. You do have... Yeah, you do have that. Uh, you've got a gun on a tripod. Hey, right, who is it? Okay, who's going inside the building and who is staying with the vehicles? Um, Just so I have a tactical I'll probably go in the... I'll probably go in the building. Okay. I'll have to stay with the vehicle if I want to launch the uh, grenades. I don't have a re remote that'll go far away from the limo yeah. other than my little push button on the... on the, the steering wheel. All right, uh, Allison. I would like you to uh, roll me a six sider. On odds, the uh, rest stop is uninhabited. On evens, uh, this place was an ambush set up by scavengers anyway. It's in uh, four. <laughs> no. <laughs> Okay. Uh, do you want to spend a luck point on that? 
You sure? I mean, what are you, I, what are odds? I, like you said, what evens were, but you didn't say what odds were, and now I'm more concerned about what odds are. Okay, sorry, my audio must maybe my audio cut out. Odds are the building is uninhabited. Evens are uh, you pulled over and walked into an ant into a bandit ambush. Uh, so, spend a luck point on that. <laughs> like hey, maybe you could turn that to your advantage. I mean, I could, but, um, I, like, I don't know how many scavengers are there, or if they're there, or they just left the booby traps. I'm not sure how scavengers work. Yeah, okay. All right. Excellent uh, deduction. So there, uh, so you're spending that luck point. Um, the rest stop is uninhabited. Uh, there is a... Uh, Skeleton, which is uh, sitting, at, is, which is propped up, sitting next to the window, walking like this, <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's probably just how, just where and how he died. <laughs> A random rattlesnake or Gila monster, and he decided, okay, I'm just gonna sit here and watch the sunset. <laughs> As I go into anaphylactic shock. So, so uh, you guys uh, pull over, uh, you take whatever shelter you want to take, and uh, this is going to be a, another combat, so everybody give me initiative rolls. That is 1d10 plus reflex. Nine. 16. 14. All right. I rolled... I rolled 20. Oh. Yeah. And these guys are uh, a little tougher than the bikers that you fought earlier. <clears throat> uh, these are called hardened mooks. So, um, as they pull off and, uh, fall, and, uh, they seem to, uh, you did not manage to evade them. They seem to know uh, right where you're, right where you're going or right where you are. And they scream their attack of Bonsai! <laughs> <laughs> and then uh first one fires one rocket into the building a 16 which will be adequate enough okay a rocket flies into the building crashes into a shelf of brochures, and then a white cloud starts billowing out from it as the building fills with tear gas. Um, you're still wearing your rad suit? Because yeah, you're I'm still driving. wearing a rad suit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Which... Probably doesn't have an independent air supply, but it definitely has a filter. Yeah, that'll help. Yeah, you're going to be fine. Um, <laughs> I, would, I would not sleep in this room, but oh. you're fine for where you are. And uh, you now, you can, and hey, now you're concealed. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the vehicles are, uh, the motorcycles are going to use their move action to, uh, cir to go in a wide circle around the building and the limo and the van, circling you like sharks. And, uh, the last motorcycle is going to take a pot, is going to take a pot shot at the limo. 
with a very heavy pistol. And I rolled a one. Seven. Okay, he drops his pistol. He pulls it out. Whoops! And it goes clattering to the ground. <laughs> okay, your turns. Starting. I did not write down your initiatives. I should have done that. Uh, I think mine was... Yeah, yours was the highest? Yeah. yeah. I was the lowest. Okay. All right, declare your actions, please. Um, I'm gonna start with shotgun. Okay. Uh, they are cycling around, not at your optimal range, so I think that you're going to have to roll a 17. Okay. A shotgun. All Oh, but on. Let's see. Do I add to the shotgun again? I add shoulder arms. Shoulder arms. Shoulder okay. Arm. Gotcha. Right. I rolled a sixteen. I'm going to use a luck point to get it to seventeen. Okay. Yeah, they're at twenty yards. I already said seventeen. I uh, that was wrong. But we'll go with that. Okay. You're spending I'm the sorry. Luck point. Um, I already declared it. You're spending the lock point, you hit. Okay. Good, you roll your damage. All right, just say I gotta roll 5d6, so give me a sec here. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fourteen points of damage. Fourteen. And three. <laughs> okay. Uh, his armor is a little better, but that does get a that does get a chunk of him. Okay, so one of these guys goes ah! and he has to now make a driving check to stay up right, and he does not make it. So he crashes. Which is... Ooh, that's a lot of sixes. <laughs> 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 the shotgun blast that uh, killed him, but uh, the shotgun blast did uh, cause him to crash, and the crash killed him. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um... Uh, he introduced himself to a cactus uh, face host. <laughs> the cactus uh, brought its uh, friend the boulder. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Uh, Zed, you're up. <laughs> um, I'm going to use the assault rifle and I'm just going to like do suppressive fire. Okay. Uh, uh, when you use suppressive fire, you're going to use up your whole clip of your whole magazine of ammo, and they have to make. I'll roll once for all of them a concentration skill roll in order to stay in formation. They do not make it, so they have to dive for cover. So they pull off behind a road sign. A road sign. <laughs> like a billboard. Not a which, is okay. advan which is advantageous to me then. Not a yield. <laughs> They're, not all a yield. Like, They're not lined up behind. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not? That makes it more fun for me. <laughs> So, uh, cavalry, you're up. All right, so I'm going to see where they hid at behind the road sign. 
and launch a couple grenades at them from well, the grenade launcher. They are moving towards the road sign. They have to go there on their turn. So uh, you can shoot at them before they reach. Okay. Okay, you know your roll. Go ahead and make two attack rolls. All right. They are close enough that you will be able to shoot uh, maybe a couple of motorcycles at a time. You're able to okay. not able to catch the entire entire pack in the same blast radius. All right. So what would I need to what would I need to beat? All right. We're going to say that there are 20 yards. Uh, grenade launchers. Uh, you have to beat a 15. All right, I'm going to spend a luck point to get myself to 16. Okay, that's a hit. Ooh, that's a lot of dice. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Got two sixes. Twenty-six points of damage. Okay. And two sixes. Uh, and that's on the first one. Okay, you're catching two motorcycles, so they'll both take that damage. Uh, minus their armor. Okay. And then I right. rolled a tw rolled a twenty on the second attack. Okay. Are you targeting uh, the next couple of motorcycles or the? Yes. The next the next couple. Okay. Twenty six again, but no sixes. It looks like these guys all managed to uh, not lose control and introduce themselves to cactuses. <laughs> the cacti. Uh, but we have a... Uh, we do have a couple of critical injuries to roll. So roll me that 2d6. Please. Two times or just once? All right, first roll was a 10. All right, that is a spinal injury. Next turn, you can't <laughs> take an action. And the second roll was a 6. All right, second motorcycle takes a broken arm. Okay, yeah, a lot of, the, a lot of his weapons uh, take uh, two arms to use, so that's going to be helpful. So, uh... You blew his arm off. <laughs> and uh, the first one took some shrapnel uh, to his spine. And I'm going to say that there's no way he's staying on the motorcycle after that. <laughs> <laughs> so, crash damage. And that's another wipeout. <laughs> So we're with down to a, four. And with a penalty to the death save and uh, did not make his death save. So he is extra dead. <laughs> okay, that leaves... Um, uh, four living motorcycle cycle gangers. And, uh, one, of, one of them is still uninjured. And they are... Continuing to press the attack. All right, the guy who lost uh, an arm just now, uh, he's going to uh, pull out a grenade, pull it with his teeth, and toss that in your general direction. 
But at this range, he's probably not going to be able to toss it the whole way. Does he have the proper skill for that? No, uh, he does, but I'm still going I'm still going to say that uh it comes up short. So a uh incendiary grenade goes off in the sand between you and this billboard. Uh the other guys they have to retreat behind the billboard, uh, which is not going to be at their optimal range. But the uninjured one is going to fire a is going to fire a rocket. Uh, which target is he going after? One and two is the limo. Anything higher than that is going inside the rest stop. He targeting the rest stop. To say, hey, this seems a little unbalanced. <laughs> I was going to say uh, that uh, three or four is going to be the van, but then I remember, oh yeah, they don't want to blow up the van. <laughs> so yeah, uh, bigger target, bigger attack. Um, I have to check the range on that. I think that might be a miss. Let's see, rocket launchers at 20, yeah. um, they had to pull back to about 50 yards. So, yep, yeah, that's a hit, actually. Let's, you are considered to be in cover, Allison. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to roll a lot of dice. And see how much it, as the rocket slams into the brick wall and uh, obliterates the brick wall. Uh, uh, your cover is now not, but you are un, but you are unhurt. Other than rattling your teeth, um, you're uh, you were hiding behind a wall that's no longer there. But you're fine. It took all of the damage for you. Such a good wall. No. And <laughs> even though this injured biker is at a penalty, one of them is going to try and shoot a pistol at Zed. Oh. Oh. And I don't think that they're hitting anything at this range. Let's see. Handgun. Oh, yeah. Pretty good handgun stat, actually. Zed? Uh, yeah. Are you... Uh, how are you taking cover again? Are you inside the van? Are you inside... Are I was you still inside the van. You're inside the van. Okay. Then uh, you are under cover. You're not taking any hit point damage, but the van takes another eight points of damage itself. So all of those repairs that uh, Jinx did, they just got undone. Um, when I see that, you just hear swearing coming from <laughs> the rest. <laughs> it's like a stream. <laughs> okay, and uh, because of that suppressive fire, uh, they were not able to charge, which is what they really wanted to do. And uh, attack you and attack you with their katanas. <laughs> so uh, this is back at instead uh, they settled uh, for uh, taking for taking cover. Uh, this is the we're back at the top again. So is that uh, me? Jinx, yeah. All right. Um, how far away are they? Fifty yards now. Right, and I'm guessing a shotgun doesn't have that range. Oh yeah, you can hit, but uh, it's going to be a extremely difficult to hit. You have to roll a DV of 25, so you have to roll 26 or higher. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's not going to work. Um, 
Let me see. What is... So I don't have, like, long-range weapons. I have, like, a flashbang gr grenade, but I don't know if that would I could launch it that far. It is possible to throw that far. Uh, but it, again, that's going to be a difficult roll. Gotcha. trying to remember if I picked up anything else when we were... Because I picked up a bunch of stuff, but I don't remember what it was. Slice and dice with claw. Linear frame. You've got the, uh, you've got the assault rifle that's on the tripod. Okay. Great. How far does that go? At 50 yards, the assault rifle would only have to roll a 13 or higher. Great, I'm going to do you, that. That works. Okay, you use the long arm skill. Um, the tripod is kind of in your way. <laughs> so it's awesome. <laughs> but, you, but you can do it. Go ahead and roll your attack. Okay. Uh, and while you're doing that, uh, Zed, uh, what's your action this round? Uh, any of them picking the head out? Okay, you you can hold an action and uh, wait for somebody to pick their to to pick their head out, and then when All they right. do, you go immediately. All right, I'll do that. I'll uh, switch to my heavy pistol and I'll just prime. Okay. And okay, Jason. Okay, Allison, what's your roll? Um, so on the dice it says zero, but. It's a 10 sided dice, ten. so is that 10? That, that, that's a 10. Mm -hmm. That's natural 10, so you'd roll it again and add it to it. Right, so that's yeah. a 10? Yes, that is a 10. That's a 6. So that's 16 plus what else? Your shoulder, your shoulder arms. Don't it's worry 13. about it. That's a hit. <laughs> Are you sure? Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, please roll your damage. Which okay, what's is... the damage? 5d6. 5d6, yeah. 5 of your 6-siders, which I realize you only have 2 of them out. Yes. <laughs> okay, so while Allison is adding those together, uh, Jason, what's your action? Um, what's the range for the exotic grenade launcher? Oh, uh, all of your weapons are within range. It is possible to hit. Okay. All right. And since um, they're hunkered down and not yeah. moving anymore, probably hopefully an easier... I rolled a 20 with two sixes. <laughs> okay. Um. Well, th that uninjured guy is now, is now taking a lot of damage. Um, you trig you did trigger the critical injury, so please roll me 2d6 and add them together. Okay. And Okay. Five extra There's a six and a damage. four that I rolled. So. Okay. And another spinal injury. Next turn, he cannot take an action. He can only move. And he is critically injured now. Okay. All right. So what would I need? What would I need to get on this one since they're no longer moving, but they're a little bit further out? You ha uh, you, with your grenade launcher, you have to roll an eighteen or higher. Oh gosh! All right. And Zed, go ahead and roll your attack because immediately after this grenade goes off, uh, one of them's go uh, they're going to pop out. Yeah, the first one isn't going to hit. Okay. Yeah, 
And the second one isn't going to hit unless I decide to use the rest of my uh, luck points. <laughs> Probably don't want to use all of them. <laughs> yeah. I got a 15. 15. Okay, with the assault rifle, right? Uh, as a pistol. Oh, pistol. Oh, well, then that one's going to miss. Okay. Yeah, that you're at a bad range for this. So with uh, all of these misses going on, <laughs> back and forth, uh, uh, the leader uh, sticks her head out and yells, Hey, Yankee! Surrender the little boy! We, we don't have a little boy. Unless you mean, you know, these two. No mercy! Surrender the little boy now! And that is a face-down roll. Everybody, roll me a ten-sider, add your cool, and your reputation. Do I have a reputation? Yeah, you uh, just got uh, two now, I think. Okay. Yeah. I've... Rolled a 13. 18. Uh, Allison's reputation is currently one. It's oh, one, okay. I rolled a 12. Venture. <laughs> she included. Okay. Eight, nine, 12, 12. Yeah, 12. Yeah, 18. I got a 15. Uh, all right, thanks, Luke. Okay, you all beat uh, her because uh, I rolled another nat one. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> And uh, uh, so uh, she's going to be at a penalty uh, for all for the actions that she takes against all three of you going forward until uh, if and when she defeats you. And at this point, um, they're just going to retreat. <laughs> they're they're being they're being well paid. They're not being uh, actually paid well enough to die. So I have to ask, were you quoting Swiss Family Robinson there? I was not. Uh, okay. This is another. <laughs> uh, this is another instance where I should be lying and say yes, I did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say no. Because I'm, I'm sitting here. Okay, get the 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 pirate uh, who's trying to get the the English uh, page boy deckhand back and. Send out, send out the boy. <laughs> okay, and uh, it is after ten. So uh, as a quick wrap up, I'm going to say that uh, there is at least one dead guy and his uh, uh, wrecked motorcycle that was left behind. Uh, you inspect the body. You find a few weapons. Uh, you find uh, some uh, surprisingly good body armor on him. It's comparable to what you guys are wearing. And uh, you also found a uh, little communications device similar to your agents. He was wearing it um, on his arm, or actually in his arm. Uh, it's a uh, cybernet. It's a uh, cybernetic implant. It's a screen, and it is showing a satellite feed, which is marking... Your location. Hey, um, um, Jinx, can you uh, alter that uh, that pin marking to mm, say <laughs> Glacier National Park? <laughs> I sh should be able to. <laughs> I'd also uh, like to know how they're marking this. <laughs> like, how are they tracking us? Like. Which one of you idiots has a tracking device on your vehicle? Like your limo. Like, can we narrow it down to, like, where the tracking device is? Uh, you can, uh, with your tech ability. Um, so, uh, roll me a ten-sider and add, us. I think, six points to it. You only need a thir- you only need a thirteen or higher. 
So roll a ten sider, add six. Fifteen. Fifteen. Adequate. Um, yes, it is tracking uh the radiation uh signal that is coming out of the van. Good. I orbit. Um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to. I want to redirect that to like be uh, miles away from where we are. <laughs> You'd have to put your hands on the orbital satellite to do that. Right. <laughs> well, I tell um, you what, you're going to have a lot of time to think up a uh, different solution because this is going to be the cliffhanger. <gasps> Cliffy! <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Hey, Luke, welcome to the Southwest. <laughs> yes. Pretty good. This is uh, genuine Yankee hospitality right here. <laughs> Gun, <laughs> guns and blood all over the place. And occasionally to your cats. <laughs> and uh, the skeleton um, is sitting there in the uh, cloud of tear gas and crying. <laughs> All righty. All right. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, thanks, Shannon. Yeah, th right. thanks for everybody who who yeah. in. All right. so, sorry about shout that. Yes. You no, you're doing great. Uh shout out to one Grella chicken who's been here the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to raid Atsumori Kofuhara who is playing tabletop games as well. Um so should just nice. show them some love. And we will all see right, you in well, two weeks unless something should happen because we are all adults and our lives are chaotic. <laughs> Adulting sucks. It sucks. <laughs> Love Turn you guys. Where you don't get to make any decisions. Good night. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>